Welcome everybody. I work at Chukchi College. We've been working with Ethnobotany in conjunction with the Kuskokwim campus. This is our second year doing it in this region and it keeps getting better and better. So I'm really excited to have you here in Kotzebue as your hosts. I found the website Ethnobotany Program 2014 Kotzebue, Alaska and I signed up because I was like she let us peel off the bark until it go to the very tip. And the very tip is almost transparent that you just eat it. It's like cartilage and it's real watery, almost like watermelon. And it just really soothes your throat. It's not just medicine. It, you know, it's food, medicine, construction, any way that you use plant parts in, in any way, and any way that you maybe view the landscape and feel a relationship to it. I want to find out what the medicinal uses are for it too because I can let my son know and he can collect it for me yeah. in times of need. I think about ethnobotany as the relationships between people and plants and their different interactions. And I feel like ethnobotany is really a way of looking at the world as people as part of the natural world and plants are part of that natural world too. Did anyone here grow up with mustard greens that they mm -hmm. ate? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. The certificate program at the University of Alaska Fairbanks is one of only a handful of programs in ethnobotany that are available in the United States. Very few universities have the option of having a program in ethnobotany. It's really great to have this option because it helps really separate you from a lot of other students that just get a degree in biology, botany, cultural anthropology, because it shows that you're truly interdisciplinary, that you can understand the discipline of botany, but also a discipline of cultural anthropology and connect those two fields. The nutrients travel through here and um, feed the weed has been used as a cough remedy for at least 2,500 years. And so the plant is not just seen as an arbitrary thing, but it's something that is involved and related to the culture. In Inupak, we call it sake rock, sake rock. And it's a very strong plant for our community, and everyone uses it in a tea and or in body washes or in I feel like ethnobotany kind of helps you focus in on the traditions you want to keep. Boil it, boil the bark, and it'll turn bright red. The program in ethnobotany is beneficial because it gives you a sense of place, a sense of groundedness, and a sense of appreciation in your culture. Please go out and carefully continue harvesting wild celery and our other native plants and berries. Taking a class is really beneficial, but if you can take all the classes and get a certificate, it can show that you really understand the plants in a, in a deep manner, but also understand the cultural interactions with those plants. Even the Surah, I to pick them while they're young. So, so when you eat them, they're not you know, so fibrous, really. One of the things I treasure about this class is we get such a diversity of students. Both instructors will have different backgrounds. All of the students will have different backgrounds, and some of them are quite knowledgeable, and we start to even think of them as being elders within the class. That blending of sharing and exchanging has made this class pretty unique. And then you got the peat bog. There's a lot to learn, but it's really a fun way to learn, I think, this type of class. So I would encourage anyone who, who was into plants to sign up and come and join us. My parents had us out in the country a lot, food gathering, local plants. We didn't do any medicinal plant use of any local plants when I grew up. So that's all new to me, which is kind of exciting. I like having the elders, actually, that we've had every evening, an elder or two or three. That's added a lot. I mean, that gives you some of that history of what people use. And, and you peel it. That no, there's better. Mm -hmm. And you, it's too old. Mm -hmm. And it's sweet. Yeah. When you're picking berries, you use those color ducks? Like a berry picker. Berry picker. I really love to, to see students that maybe haven't thought about different ways to use plants, using plants in new ways, incorporating plants in what we eat every day, 
uh, using plants for dyes. It was normally gathered in early spring or late fall to get the really red color. What I did with my dye is I, I dyed a caribou skin. I was excited to hear that there's so much that we could do with a lot of these plants that I was just, I always took for granted just to look at them and just study them and say, hmm, I don't know what you're good for, you know. And I am a cancer survivor, so I'm just more interested in eating healthier and learning which plants to eat from around my hometown. So, you know, the pesticides and the store-bought foods. It's not in our traditional diet. It's brought in to my village, and by then, you know, half the nutrition is gone as to, you know, we can get more of the nutrition out of something that we've collected versus the food that's had to travel. I'm making sushi with sea asparagus and cucumber in the middle, salmon caviar on top from right outside of Lavon Hendricks camp. We collected sour dock on a few different occasions. They taught us how to clean it and how to chop it up. My mom would just cut them like this. We cooked it and we've been eating it pretty much every day since we started gathering it. I'm cooking the wild sour dock. It's called call. It cooks like 20 to 25 minutes depending on how much sour dock there is. My grandmother cooks it probably one of the main vitamins that they eat. And here's the cooked product, sour dock. Never did the cooking because I didn't know how. Now I see how it's done and I'm hoping to uh, do that part with my children too. And I'm learning how to categorize different plants and plant families that I didn't know before. They showed us the foundations of botany, and now I feel knowledgeable and more confident. Knowing that they were going to teach the basics of botany, that was important to me, and they delivered. Okay. You've got this year's fruits. You've got some of last year's capsules, what's left mm -hmm. of them. These are immature capsules, so just kind of spread things out so when okay. we press them, they won't be on top of each other, leaning against each other. Okay. So that looks good. Oh. Thank yeah, you. and then if you set this in a warm, breezy place, the idea is your plants will get dried out fairly quickly, and once they're dry, they're well preserved. So it's a big sandwich that you tie up with straps between a couple of boards and dry it out. My goal is to take the knowledge back to my sons who are part Yupik and Inupiaq. I will be able to show them some of the plants that I've learned so far that I'm confident with, and then we're going to uh, safely harvest them because this class taught us to safely harvest them. I'm so excited. I'm going to get a plant press and everything. The whole thing has been just tremendously a good experience. I like everything about it. I like the field trips. I like the paperwork. I like the reading. Is there anything else that's in the same I've already noticed just walking around Kotzebue in my time off. There are a lot of plants there that I can recognize now. So I've already feel like I've taken a big step forward in being able to identify plants. I think you know about your local plants and then come to find out that there's a lot, lot more than you thought.